our mass on a spring, we really had two parameters we were thinking about. There was the amplitude of the motion, how large it goes up and down, and there was the frequency, the time between periods or how many cycles it goes through per second. So one of those I can change. I can change the amplitude. So here it is with a big amplitude, right? And here it is with a small amplitude. So if you get out your stopwatches at home, you could probably tell that the frequency of those two is the same. It looks like it's moving faster at the bigger amplitude because it has more ground to cover to get through a whole cycle. But if you were to actually sit there and count the cycles and watch the timer on your computer, the frequencies of those are the same. So the amplitude is free to vary but the frequency seems to be set. So this is called the natural frequency because it is the natural frequency at which an oscillator likes to go. All oscillators have some natural frequency. So the preferred frequency, we'll say. Hopefully I spell preferred right, frequency. And there are formulas to tell us what the preferred frequency is. So if we have our mass on a spring, and I'm actually going to draw it sideways, because gravity doesn't really actually affect the answer, but it complicates the analysis. So let's go ahead and just pretend we're doing this. A mass m and a spring constant k. And we've written the equations. We know that the equation that drives this thing is minus kx equals m times the acceleration. And we're not going to solve it. I told you it's sinusoidal motion. And I told you that the motion looks like this, a sine um, 2 pi f t. Okay. So now I'm going to tell you is f, it turns out, in this case, is uh, 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k over m. In fact, for any simple harmonic oscillator you set up, if you can get it written like this, and if you can do your Newton's laws and get an A here and a bunch of stuff and an X here, or acceleration here, position here, whatever's in front of the X, the position, without the minus sign, that's what goes in the square root. So other oscillators with a different equation, you could also figure out what their natural frequency is. But this special frequency, we call it F naught, is the frequency that it will oscillate at if you just give it a perturbation, if you just get it moving. If you drive it, if you push it on top, you know, at some known frequency, it'll go at the frequency you push it at. But if you just push it and let it go, and let it go whatever frequency it wants, it'll go at this frequency right here. You might see this also written as omega, right? So F is in hertz. If you want to work in radians per second, then you call it omega in radians per second. Then you have omega naught the angular frequency, easier to remember the square root of k over m. Okay, And now we can kind of prove this to you. We can vary both k and m. So here I have one spring uh, uh, controlling the motion of the mass. And here I'll add an identical spring. Okay, So get a feel for how fast that's going, kind of up and down, nice, a little bit less than a second for the period. So now I'm going to double the spring constant k. And you can see, well, it pulls it up higher. It also moves quite a bit faster. It's not quite twice as fast because I've put a 2 here under the square root. It's going up the square root of 2 times as fast, so about 1.4 times as fast. And we can pull that out. We can also increase the mass. So here it is going at our normal square root of k over m. And if I stick a second mass on here like this, uh, like that, you can see very clearly uh, this worked great two minutes ago. You can see, there we go. You can see with a bigger mass, it appears to be going slower. Right? It's more slowly up and down, up and down, up and down. And here's a reminder of what it looked like before. A little bit faster. But again, not a huge effect because the mass is in the square root. But it does slow it down somewhat to have a larger number in the, square root, in the denominator.